United Voices of the World UVW is an independent grassroots trade union formed in 2014, and based in Waterloo, London. Its members are mainly migrant cleaners, and workers in other outsourced or low-wage industries. UVW has a strong association with the Latin American community. The union was born out of a long-running effort to secure the London living wage for outsourced cleaners at the Barbican Centre. This was the subject of a 25-minute documentary, Waging a Living in London 2014. .In 2019, UVW launched Legal Sector Workers United to organise legal sector workers across the UK. The semi-independent branch comprises several barristers, and has been supported by Michael Mansfield QC. Since 2018, UVW has been organizing strippers and other sex workers, with the support of groups advocating for the decriminalization of sex work. In March 2019, Sky News filmed brief interviews with UVW members for a news segment on stripper unionization. UVW's current longest running campaign is at the Ministry of Justice, where outsourced cleaners, security guards, and receptionists are demanding the London living wage plus parity of sick pay and annual leave with civil servants. The first strike took place in August 2018, and a second was staged in January 2019 in conjunction with PCS members striking at the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. Campaigning style UVW gained media attention representing small groups of workers in disputes with global brands such as Sotheby's and Topshop, and by taking a radical approach to organizing precarious workers, who have been shunned and underserved by established unions. Co-founder and former General Secretary Petros Alia has said, one of the things UVW and IWGB a sister union offer workers, besides prospects of winning real gains, is a sense of community. That is a large part of the reason why workers join and stay. Campaigns are characterized by noisy and disruptive pickets and protests, embracing diverse groups and utilizing social media to attract further support. In the street, this scaling up of the protest was facilitated by a strong element of fun. The picket lines were turned into festive moments where participants could dance Zumba, make banners with artists, listen to poetry and live music, and take part in salsa dancing flash mob occupations of the LSE's director's buildings. Online, the campaign circulated petitions e.g. against the surprising police presence on campus, and produced Facebook pages, while established bloggers and professional photographers documented every step of the protest. This combination of online and street presence, media attention, and broad-based alliances, contributed in making the cleaners' struggle impossible to ignore. Topic: Notable victories. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> London School of Economics. In late 2016, contested dismissals of cleaners employed by Noonan Services at the London School of Economics (LSE) escalated into a full-scale dispute for equality of rights to match those of LSE's in-house staff. Dozens of cleaners, all of ethnic minorities, faced significant disparities in paid annual leave, sick pay, paternity, maternity pay, and pension contributions when compared to LSE employees. They wore uniforms inscribed with both the name of the university and their employer, but had been instructed by Noonan's management to change out of uniform before using the university's fourth-floor cafeteria. 
They were subsequently assured by LSE management that the cafeteria was open to all customers, which highlighted a further disparity. The cleaners typically brought their own food and drink and therefore would not be customers, but unlike in house staff, had no common room or kitchen space to make use of. Large campus protests and weekly strikes were organized by UVW in the summer of 2017, attracting much student support despite coinciding with the exam period. It was announced in June 2017, after a 10-month campaign, that around 200 outsourced workers at the LSE would be offered in-house contracts. <laughs> Harrods Over 450 kitchen and waiting staff at the 16 restaurants and cafes within Harrods were being kept in the dark about the total proceeds of a discretionary 12.5% service charge added to bills. They received only an unspecified percentage of the total, which while not rare in the hospitality industry, was particularly controversial given Harrods' profitability and the wealth of its Qatari owners. It was reported that Harrods management had told staff in a meeting that 50% of the total was retained by the company as revenue, though many believed the true figure to be as high as 75%, which would have resulted in each employee losing out on £5,000 per year. During early January sales in 2017, a contingent organized by UVW, including Harrods employees, staged a surprise protest and roadblock along the Brompton Road storefront. A large inflatable cube read, Stop stealing our tips. While a red flare was lit, entrances were locked, two arrests were made, and more than two dozen police frustrated the protesters for several hours. Harrods announced on 20 January that, An improved trunk system would be introduced to guarantee that 100% of service charges go to employees. The Daily Mail Group In 2018, the Northcliffe House offices of the Daily Mail and sister publications were being cleaned by migrants from the Caribbean, Africa and Latin America on £7.50 an hour. Mighty, the contractor employing the cleaners, allegedly threatened the cleaners not to strike, and would not confirm whether they had initiated a redundancy process for its Northcliffe house cleaners as recently as February, off the back of demands from DMG to decrease the cost of the contract." UVW created a Change.org petition in support of the cleaners' demand for the London living wage, attracting over 100,000 signatures. Refusing to voluntarily recognize UVW as the cleaners' trade union, and facing strikes and protests, DMG issued a statement claiming that Mighty had, some time ago, approved pay increases for the cleaners. Mighty confirmed that our teams working at DMG have been informed of a pay increase to at least, and in some cases, beyond the London living wage. Topic: Top Shop. Susana Benavides, a Latin American cleaner employed by Britannia Services Group to clean Top Shop's flagship store on London's Oxford Street, was represented for several years by UVW in her fight for dignified treatment and the London living wage. She had suffered depression resulting from an ongoing series of bullying incidents. In May 2016, 200 protesters were joined by Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell MP in a show of solidarity for Susana, and hundreds of leaflets were placed in the pockets of clothing items. An online petition supporting Susana attracted over 35,000 signatures. She and her colleague Carolina were suspended and then sacked. A 2019 ruling secured by Cloisters barrister Akua Riendorf in Susana's successful claim against Britannia found it to be clear beyond any argument that Susana was dismissed for engaging in legitimate trade union activities.
Topic: <laughs> Sotheby's. Cleaners and porters at Sotheby's New Bond Street Auction House were employed by Contract Cleaning and Maintenance London Limited CCML, who conceded several demands after UVW initiated a formal dispute and 24 MPs signed an early day motion condemning a litany of poor employment practices. Sotheby's then terminated their contract with CCML and brought in serviced, taking UVW's dispute back to square one. A surprise protest on 1 July 2015 sought to disrupt a major auction night including contemporary art by Andy Warhol and Francis Bacon. Four of the workers involved were denied access the following morning, and suspended indefinitely, after CCTV allegedly captured protesters spraying water pistols at clients. Two were later reinstated while the other two were dismissed. Sotheby's Battersea Classic Car Auction in September was disrupted by another UVW protest. In February 2016 it was announced that Sotheby's and Serviced had reached an agreement to pay all outsourced workers the London living wage and improved sick pay. <laughs> <laughs> Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea Cleaners working for Kensington and Chelsea Council, principally at the Town Hall, were employed by Amy via a £150 million 10-year, Tri-Borough, services contract. Amy paid them the minimum wage of £7.83 per hour, and provided no sick pay beyond the statutory minimum, which paid nothing for the first three days of absence, and only a heavily reduced wage thereafter. In May 2018 a group of cleaners represented by UVW demanded the London Living Wage LLW of £10.20 per hour, and in August coordinated a joint strike with cleaners at the Ministry of Justice, supported by the MP for Kensington, Emma Dent Code. On the first of three planned strike days, RBKC issued two mixed messages within a few hours, the first apparently committing to bringing the cleaners in-house, and the second merely promising a review of Amy's contract. The striking cleaners burst into a council meeting later that afternoon, securing an agreement from council members to engage with cleaners on the picket line the next morning. A statement by the council's chief executive Barry Quirk the following day confirmed that all options were being considered in order to deliver the cleaners' wage demands, including ending Amy's contract and bringing the cleaners in-house. In September, the council fully committed to paying the LLW as of January 2019, with council leader Elizabeth Campbell further promising to try and secure backdated payment of the LLW from October onwards. Topic: <laughs> Orion Waste Management. Peruvian employees at Orion's industrial recycling plant in East London walked off the job in March 2018. They sorted construction waste in unsafe and dusty conditions, with insufficient personal protection and a lack of basic facilities. Along with UVW staff and supporters, they confronted the general manager and laid out their demands, which included, the London living wage, contractual sick pay, slower working, new face masks, soap, toilet paper, a shower room, and a decent supply of gloves, uniforms and hard hats. Many of the requested items were ordered the same day, and the striking workers were promised full pay until they resumed work, as well as board-level consideration of wage and contractual demands. 100 Wood Street The 100 Wood Street offices in the City of London, designed by Norman Foster, were cleaned by Latin American migrants employed by Thames Cleaning and Support Services. Demanding a raise to the London living wage, and the reinstatement of several colleagues after a heavy cost-cutting restructure in early 2016, a group of cleaners commenced an indefinite strike and daily picket. 
After 52 days, a record for any strike in the City of London, a confidential agreement was reached that apparently secured the living wage and a promise to «resolve other issues». 